Hi, my name is Justin Pate, owner of the Rap Institute, and welcome to my living room. During this time, my family and I have decided to shelter in place to keep our community and ourselves safe, and I sincerely hope that you are doing the same. Uh, is it a confusing, heavy time right now? Absolutely. And uh, we at the Rap Institute have been thinking about how we can give back to the community. So our, as you all may know, our slogan is never stop learning, and I think it's more apropos than ever. So instead of taking this time and kind of vegging out or stressing, we've created a series that actually can be very educational and entertaining. Uh, it's called Wrap in Place, and I'm going to have all these videos that focus on how to wrap everyday objects in your house, which is super cool, actually. And it's really geared towards employees who are staying home to keep their skills fresh. Uh, people who have never picked up vinyl, so beginners, and also family members, so even like kids who are staying home from school. So the idea is I've geared it for, you know, using wrap professional tools or DIY tools. So I kind of focus on that, like scissors and stuff. I uh, take scraps from work, wrap shops, or you can call your local distributor and order one or two yards and have it delivered to your house. And then you can get into wrapping really cool stuff like, let's say, a coffee maker, or in this case, a coffee cup, which is super cool. So it builds really strong fundamentals in terms of how to set the panels up, how to cut, squeegee, and all that kind of stuff. And what you have to think about is if you can wrap stuff in your house, it naturally builds to bigger things. And the Wrap Institute has 1800 videos plus on how to wrap boats and planes and cars. So if you really like wrapping objects in your house, you can get a membership and learn how to wrap those things or take a hands-on workshop. I teach them for Avery Dennison, North America and across the world. So wrapping can be a lot of fun, especially during this time. Take advantage and keep on learning. Let's get to it. So the idea is just create a very simple story in your head. And for me, it begins with uh, just having a set of three. Prep, install, post. So if you create that three sequence around whatever you're wrapping, it really makes it easy and fun and just lets you flow into it. So we're wrapping a coffee cup today. So what does that mean in this case? It means that we have to do several things. First step, I think, is to create the measurements, make the measurements for the brown section. So once we get that set, we're then gonna clean the cup and then we're gonna to get to wrapping. So pretty straightforward, but again, the measurements are the tricky part. So let's begin with that. So we've got the coffee cup here, all right? So what you wanna do is create the measurements. So now you have two ways, obviously, to measure. You have a measuring tape, and this is great for, let's say, walls, windows, floors, and cars, but because the coffee cup is curved and we wanna get that precise measurement, it's hard to kind of get an exact one here. So for me, a standard tape measure, maybe not the best option, so hopefully in your house, and again, you know, sewing kits and stuff like that have that and all this stuff. So a lot of homes have this, which is great, is a fabric tape measure, which is awesome. So this is really nice to have. So this is particularly good for a coffee cup because it can flex and it's much easier for precise measurements. So you always want to get the width and length. So we'll begin with the width right now. So I'm going to come down here, set it up to here, and this gets down to around, ah, around 9.5. So if this is 9.5, you want to make it around 9.6 or 9.7, so you have a little extra just past the edge. If you go straight to the edge, it's a little tricky, so you always want to give yourself that little extra on the side. So once we have that set, 9.5, we're going to now measure from this side. So I set it up to this side here, and then flip it around, and what do we got? We got about, double check it down here, we got a little past... 21 and a half. So once we get that 21 and a half, we want to keep that in mind. So here, I think now we're just going to take a scrap of material. So I think just so you don't forget, I think it's always a good idea to do 9.5 and then do 21 point, let's say seven. So that's our measurements and draw it on the scrap. So it's a good reference point there. So once we have this now, it's time to cut out the rectangle. What's the best way to do it? Well, for me, different ways. So right now, because this is scrap, there's no natural straight edge on the piece right now. So what you want to do is start off with one straight line. So I'm going to basically take a short little level, but again, if you don't have proper wrapping tools, you can also take a straight edge ruler right now. So I'm going to do that in this case, just because why not? So I'm going to take it right to here and just draw a straight line across. So come down to here, mark it to here and go from side to side all the way across to there. Bam, so now this is straight. So you'd think, well, I'll just draw the other straight line on top here, but how do you know that it's the same distance here? Because you don't want it to be crooked because you want to get that perfect rectangle right now. So there are a couple different options for that right now. So for me right now, one option is to take something that has natural 90 degree corners. 
So if you take this now, at a certain distance right now, I'm going to now actually start from here and make sure it lines up perfectly with the blue there. And then I'm just going to make a mark here. So that's my perfect 90 degree turn. So now that I got my 90 degree turn, I know that if I continue that up, that'll be straight. So now I reference now I got to do 21.7, come back over here, take my tape measure now, come back to this side, lock it into here, pull it over right across the blue line, and I'm going to mark it right to there. Cool. So now I know that this is the length, and now I want to do another 90 degree turn here. So I can set this down, make sure the box fits perfectly on the blue line, set it up to here, come back down over here, and now I make the mark to there. Cool. So now I have my 90 degree turns on either side, and I know that that's the vertical. Cool. So I come back here with the ruler, set it up to here, make sure the ruler goes exactly along the blue line, then I continue all the way to the top. Come back over here, and I can do the exact same thing. Make sure it's lined up to here perfectly. Once I do that, I put my fingers on top, lock it down to here. Once I have that set, now I got to figure out how long it goes. Reference the measurement points here, which is 9.5. Come back to the tape measure, lock it onto here. And again, I'm just using a standard dry erase marker and you could be using inches or centimeters, whatever floats your boat. Come up to here, mark at 9.5. Come over to here and mark it 9.5. And so part of this process obviously is making really precise measurements because what's important about this is if you don't have good measurements, obviously it's not going to fit correctly and it's going to be crooked. So this is if you're having that competition, whoever has crooked lines loses some points and you might be doing dishes tonight. And the idea is if you're a professional installer is taking my time. I'm going to show you two ways to wrap the cup, which are actually the second one especially is super fast. So if you're focused on speed, but you don't have quality, who cares? You want to find that balance and that's what we're really trying to push on the Wrap Institute. So now we have this measurement here. Good to go. So we have everything set. So now it's about how to cut it out. And there's two ways to cut it out. So one way is to use a knife. So if you're a professional installer or you're learning how to become a professional installer, this is a great way to do it. So the first step is to click your blade so it's extra sharp. And obviously, because I'm working at home right now, don't have my normal cutting tables that I would have at the workspace. So in this case, I'm using a cutting board that I use in the kitchen. So this is nice, I can cut on it, super safe. Obviously you don't want to cut on your tables and stuff like that. So now I want to cut it out. So one option now is to, in this case, instead of using the ruler, and why I'm not going to use the ruler right now is if I put it here and I cut, the chance of it jumping off and cutting myself is really high. So what you want to do is you want to use something that's a little higher. So in this case, I take this one and it has a little, obviously sticks up nice and high. So if my knife does jump off, all right, I'm not going to cut myself. So the trick is right now, I make sure it lines up perfectly so it's super symmetrical on that blue line. I take my two fingers and I spread them out and I push down very hard and I cut at a 90 degree angle right to the edge. And if I cut at a 90 degree angle right to the edge, it cuts off nice and clean and I pull it away nice and slow right to here. And if it cuts off nice and clean, it stays straight. I don't angle it in or out. So this is option number one for cutting. But obviously, if kids are doing this right now, definitely don't want kids using a knife. So another option is to use scissors. So you can totally use scissors now and come in and do your cut. And as long as you're precise and straight, you're good to go. And again, scissors are much safer than using a knife. So again, don't feel like you have to use a blade. But for me, I'll just kind of get in the flow right now. And I'll just show you kind of getting everything set up. Get everything here, pressing down, make sure it's nice and symmetrical. Take this down, cut, comes off, rotate it, it's cool. Come down here. Line it up right to the edge, line it up right to the edge. Again, spread the fingers out, cut all the way across, cool. Pull this aside, switch it back, and do the final cut. So right here, easy and straightforward. You can see that once you get in the flow, this can actually go pretty quick. So now I got my cut out, rock and roll, all right? So you always want to double check, make sure it fits. So I line it up here, looks good. Come back up to here. Just do a quick 
wrap around and looking pretty good. So the measurements were precise. I feel like we're good top to bottom, left to right and rock and roll. So what's fun now is especially if you're working as a team or there's lots of kids doing it or there's a couple people in the room working right now, what you also want to do is just maybe think in the big picture. So instead of everyone measuring right now, maybe one person measures, but if you're putting multiple pieces on right now, you can do something like this. And this is again what the Ref Institute is all about. So the Ref Institute is not only showing you how to do it a certain way, but it's also showing you how to do it efficiently. So right now, let's say if you're wrapping two coffee cups or three coffee cups. So instead of reinventing the wheel every time, which is in this case measuring every time, so what you're going to do is you're going to use this as a template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my masking tape, set it to here, lay it nice and flat so it doesn't move, and then I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to set it up. So think about how long it took to measure and do everything out, where in this case I'm going to do this, set it up to here, make my mark, make my mark, and on every corner I'm going to do that 90 degree turn so it's set, mark it to the edge, mark it to the edge, and the reason why I put the masking tape there is the masking tape held it in position, so once everything's set now, I can now pick this up, take the masking tape away, and this is my essentially my template piece, put this down, and now I can lay this flat, and I can cut everything out. So I set it to here, come back and take my straight edge right now, and then drop it like it's hot, put it to here, hold it down in place, pull out my marker, and line it up. So you can cut out as many pieces as you want. And again, what's great about it is using scraps. So this is just a roll that I brought in from the shop. And this is actually a piece of full print. So this is always a good idea for wrap shops to save your scraps. Great for beginners. And again, great for your family. And in this case, you're wrapping in place. So I got all the multiple pieces here. And so let's get to it. So I'm going to show two ways of how to wrap the coffee cup now. We'll begin with the blue one and we'll end with the full print one. Doesn't matter which one you do. So whatever your style of preference. So, so now the prep part of the prep phase was now getting your pieces cut. So that's how to measure and get those pieces perfectly symmetrical, all that kind of good stuff. Now we get into cleaning, which is still part of the prep process. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to be wrapping on this cutting board right now. So the idea right now is not only do you want to just focus on cleaning the cup, you want to clean the board. And the reason why is sometimes if there's dirt on the board or around the area you're wrapping, sometimes that dirt gets sucked in. So get the coffee cup set here and we'll clean it. And you can use standard cleaners throughout the house, but I recommend, you know, getting a microfiber towel. They're really good at absorbing lots of moisture, dirt, all that kind of stuff. But what you also have to think about in terms of cleaners is I think white vinegar is the best one. Why do I think white vinegar is the best one? Is it's non-toxic, safe, it's cheap. And what's interesting, I talked earlier about that dirt, is it deionizes the surface around the area you're wrapping. So oftentimes, especially in the winter time, where you're wrapping, and if you're in a wrap shop and you're a wrapper and doing this wrap in place video right now, is you know that sometimes you take that backing paper off and it creates electrostatic charge and it sucks all the dirt in and it gets underneath your wrap, which obviously lowers the quality. No one likes specks of dirt underneath the wrap. So white vinegar is actually really good for that. So if you didn't know that, good tip for that. So now that the coffee cup is cleaned, what I like to do is kind of warm it and make sure it's nice and dry. So in this case, because you're working from home, you usually sometimes you use heat guns and those tips can get really hot, which can damage furniture and especially for kids, not super safe. You can use a hairdryer. Totally fine. So in this case, you can set. Super quick. But what I like about this is it just makes sure it makes the surface super dry, gets it a little warm so the material bites in nice and clean. And now we're ready to go. So now that ends the prep phase. So again, with the Wrap Institute, what we're trying to show is super simple processing. So you got prep, install, and post. And now we get to install, which is definitely the fun part. So let's begin. So we got the blue piece here. So what you could do theoretically is just take off the whole backing paper and try to put it in place. But that can be really difficult. The reason why is we have to be precisely aligned left to right, top to bottom. So the best way to do that now is by creating what they call a temporary and permanent hinge. So the best way in this case to create a temporary hinge is to use masking tape, which you can obviously find in your house. Everyone has masking tape in their house. So I'm going to take this piece here 
and I'm going to line it pretty much exactly up with the, the brown right on this side. So I take it right to here, holding it with my thumb, holding it right there, and lock it in place right to there. Flip the coffee cup around, take it down over here, take it, shift it right to here, and now I got full coverage, left to right, which is good. And now it's all about making sure I'm symmetrical. So I'm going to pull the material nice and tight, hold it there with my thumb, holding inside the cup, and put the masking tape right to there. Cool. So now the trick is right now, I want to make sure that it's the same around top to bottom. So it's all about symmetry right now. So I look at the bottom, looks nice and symmetrical, I look at the top. So this is all part of the process of getting this lined up perfectly. So now that I got it tacked on this side, now you want to create a hinge in the middle. Think of it like a door. So right now I'm going to use masking tape again. And now you always want to start off with what I call the 50-50 point. So if I start taking the backing paper off here and stretch it all the way to the here, the chance of going crooked is really high. So you want to hedge your bets. So right now I'm going to take the masking tape and put it in the middle, which is in this case the 50-50 point. So I'm going to take the masking tape to here, lock it down, and anchor it here. So this, by the tape holding here and here, this is going to hold it in place. So when I go to take the backing paper off, I have a 50-50% chance of lining it up, which is going to be really good. So in this case now, just to make sure that it lines up perfectly, I'm going to take dry erase marker in this case, and I'm doing this right here. So I'm making a mark right to there, and making a mark right to there. And the reason why I'm doing that is, so once I take the backing paper off, when I pull it back, if I line that up and it matches perfectly, I'm symmetrical. Awesome. So that only takes a few seconds, so good tip for that. So now, once everything's set, make sure the masking tape is holding on back here. I'm going to pull the masking tape off here. Now, this is a good tip, especially if you're beginners right now, is this masking tape is your buddy. And why it's your buddy right now is if I go to pull the backing paper off and grab it here, two things are bad. Is I might stretch the material, which might make the edge crooked. But number two is I might get the oil from my fingers on the adhesive, which, cause it, which may cause it not to stick. So keep the, backing the masking tape on. So when I go to pull the backing paper off, I don't touch the wrap area. So once everything's set now, the material's hanging out here, you have a couple options to take the backing paper off. You can take your knife and cut it here, which is number one, but there's a chance of cutting the coffee cup or yourself. You can also take this. This is a cool little tool. So basically there's a blade inside here, which I can stick inside here, and I push it across all the way here, and this goes inside here, it just cuts, but I, if I touch the cup, the plastic is touching the cup, and I don't cut it, which is super cool. So I highly recommend using tools like this. Otherwise, you can use scissors, which are super safe. So either way works. Once everything's set now, it's all about that alignment. So I'm going to rotate it back, grab the masking tape right now, and I'm going to flip the piece over, and I'm going to hold it right here, and I'm going to round it right to the edge, and I'm going to make sure that the line's up, Make sure it's symmetrical. Once this is set, I'm looking for what I call glass. So if I don't see any wrinkles here on the material, that tells me everything's good to go. So now I can take my squeegee. Now, if you don't have a squeegee at home, you can use this, say, a credit card and a paper towel or a microfiber towel. But either way, squeegees are great. And what's nice about a coffee cups and the squeegee is the width of the squeegee is basically the width of what I'm wrapping or just a little wider. So basically what I can do is take my squeegee now and I can actually rotate the cup and I can squeegee it on in basically one stroke, nice and easy. And then I make sure I go around the edge, make sure it's down nice and tight. Cool, come back down here, line it up and everything's good. Lock down, you can even use your finger sometimes on the edge. But now this piece is locked and loaded. So now this is basically holding this piece on, which I call a permanent hinge. So now I can remove the masking tape remove the markers with my thumb, and now I can start on the other side. So I'm going to do the other side exactly the same, but before doing the other side, I remove the masking tape, which I can save for later. Pull the masking tape up. Cool. And then flip this up, but again, good habits and fundamentals that we're trying to push on the Wrap Institute is take a few seconds and make your marks so everything lines up. Drop this back. Now, in this case, Pull the masking tape up. Again, the masking tape is your friend here. Pull it up to here, flip it back, and now you got this. So I'm going to pull the liner up and away, 
and then I'm going to take the masking tape, flip it over, and I'm going to rotate the cup right now. So I flip it over, make sure I don't get any wrinkles. So pull, nice, even, straight forward. Make sure everything lines up right to there, so everything looks good. Take my squeegee and squeegee it around. So I rotate, and I'm actually pressing pretty hard. The reason why I want to press hard is I want to make sure the material sticks nice and good. Once I get it to there, pull the masking tape away, and what I can do is do that double check over with my squeegee, right to there, and good. It's cool. So now the blue is on, everything's symmetrical, lock in, and everything's locked and loaded, and I'm really happy. So now you think as an installer, even if you're a kid or you're just learning how to wrap, you think, well, I'm done. Okay, but what's really important about wrapping, as I said, create those three compartments, prep, install, and now post. How do you finish this? The most important thing I think right now is warming it up. And what the, what the, the heat does is it softens the adhesive, makes it kind of flow and stick better, but also if there's any air underneath the film, it's going to expand and it's going to become a bubble. So what that's good is, is now once I see the bubble, I can press it and make it go flat. So here we go. So I warm it. I go over it with heat, and there you go. You see some bubbles. I'm gonna come down here, go back with heat, and now you can see in the camera all those little bubbles. So how do I get those bubbles to go away? Well, this particular film has lines in the adhesive which makes those lines, which makes the air spread out. So everywhere I see a, a bubble, I can take my finger, and again, this is why wrapping a coffee cup is tricky, so even though I use a squeegee, the curve doesn't allow the, sometimes the squeegee to press hard enough. So by do, uh, hitting it with air, or hitting it with warm air, and then having it go down, then I see all those bubbles, I double check it with my finger, and good. But now, what did I just do? I went over the thing with my fingers, which can be a little oily, and in this case, covered with oil from, mmm, tortilla chips, okay? So what you have to do is think about part of post is go over with heat, and also with post is, cleaning. So I'm going to go over with the vinegar one more time, double check that I get all those handprints off. And again, this is part of finishing, finishing strong. So just like sports, just like anything, you want to finish strong. So now coffee cup is clean, everything is lined, everything is sealed, no bubbles, and now I got a brand new coffee cup. Super cool. So this is one way to wrap the coffee cup. And in this second part of the video, I want to show how to put this super colorful piece on, showing a different technique that involves using this super cool tool. And if you've never seen this tool, you definitely want to check out this part of the video because it's going to make it wrap faster and better. And this one comes from Yellow Tools, a great company in Germany. Let's get to that. So now we get to a second way to wrap the coffee cup. And again, remember I mentioned earlier in the video that there's not one way to wrap anything. There's always different ways to approach it. And I love that. And that's one of the reasons why I like the Wrap Institute is tons of different ways to wrap a hood or tons of different ways to do recessed areas. And I travel the world and I go to Japan and Australia and Brazil and America. And I'm always picking up these tips and tricks and putting them in the videos. And again, this one's super fun because coffee cup, wrap in place. Uh, obviously, when you get to this one, very important to get a candy, get that going on. So now what's different about this approach right now is instead of creating a hinge with masking tape in the middle, I'm going to do a shortcut, and then I'm going to use a unique tool to do it. So in this case now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to get this piece that I have, and I'm going to fold it in half, just a little bit. I don't want to crease it, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this pen, put the top on, and I'm going to mark it at the 50-50 point. So I mark it on either side, so you can see my mark. So that's right in the middle. So what I can do now is this. I'm going to take this super cool tool, and again, this comes from a great company in Germany called Yellow Tools, all right? And it's called the Twin Teflon Blade. So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to pick up the backing paper just a little bit and separate it from the vinyl. So once I do that, I'll show you kind of this gap, this little mouth I'm creating right there. And what's cool about this now is I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to slide those little two prongs, those little two tips at the front, and I'm going to slide it in between the film. I'm going to line up the markers and I'm going to pull it across. And what this does is it just cuts the backing paper. Super cool. So now instead of setting up that masking tape now, it helps me save a step. So having this tool, super awesome. So now I take the masking tape that I saved before, 
Always a good idea just to save the masking tape. You know, it's good for the environment. You don't have to waste tape. Come back over here. Line up the masking tape right to here. So again, same thing. Temporary hinge. Got my cup. Obviously, cleaned and prepped it. Everything's good to go. Gonna come over here. Line the image up or the edge up right to the brown. Shift it back. Lock this in place. Flip this panel over. Make sure it lines up nice, clean, and straightforward. Nice and symmetrical because this is a template piece off the one that fit before. I know that it's going to be exact match. And again, that super time savings right there. So now I double check the symmetry, make sure it's the same height, both sides, make sure the bottom is good. Once that's set now, again, instead of using the masking tape here, I know exactly where it's cut so I can take my squeegee and just lock it in right there. So this now is my permanent hinge, locked and loaded, and I can do either side. So same thing as before. In this case, always a good idea to have different colored pens on site. So in this case now, I can mark it here, mark it here, and do the same. Mark it, mark it, so it's lined up. Take the pen away, got my squeegee, and bam. So innovative tools are always changing the industry. So part of what I love about wrapping, I've been wrapping for a long time, since 1996 actually, and the tools have changed. Back in the day, it used to be just a squeegee. That's all you had to wrap with and a knife. And every year they come out with new tools. So it makes it fun, makes it interesting. And that's why the slogan of the Wrap Institute is never stop learning. And I came up with this phrase because for me, I've been, as I said, I've been wrapping for a long time and I could have stuck in the same rut that I've, you know, was in with the terms of techniques and focus. But if you're always open to learning and changing and adapting, you can always get better, faster, and it keeps wrapping a lot of fun, especially when you're wrapping coffee cups in your house. Cool. So we went from a very kind of boring coffee cup to very quickly with this full print piece and a scrap. Now we got a super cool coffee cup. So if you like blue, you can wrap your coffee cup blue. If you like the Grateful Dead, you can <laughs> wrap your coffee cup like this. So once I get everything set, same protocol, double check. Now I'm going to do the heat check. Very important because now I'm getting into post. Go over a heat, making sure the, the adhesive is flowing. Once everything's nice and warm, I'm going to come back. Make sure the edges are nice and sealed. Cool. Come down here and bam. Double check here. Everything's looking good. Final step, again, just getting these to become good habits, all the steps that you have to take. Wipe it down to here. Everything's good, cool, and now we've got my coffee cup. So in this case now, what I might do is gonna finish and go get a coffee and put it in this cup and be pretty happy that I just wrapped that cup. So, and you could do the same thing. So again, this is part of the wrap and place series. And this is good fundamentals, especially if you're a beginner, to learn how to make those measurements. And again, whoever has the best cup might not have to do dishes tonight, which is definitely a lot of fun. So we're, again, part of the series, we're going to be wrapping different things in the house. Maybe this cutting board, coffee maker, lots of things in the house, building up those fundamentals. So while you're sheltered in place, you can wrap in place and have a lot of fun. And that's how it should be. So hope this helps you wrap better, wrap better and faster. Thanks for watching. I'm Justin Pate.